Hi and welcome back to my weekly series on Tesla stock analysis. I hope by you know doing such videos it gives you a you know better understanding on Tesla stock and the things that they do to give you a better investment decision if you are to ever invest in Tesla stock. Okay, so this week I'm going to cover these few things. So I as usual every video I'll start with the charts first. I will review the Tesla stock on the charts and where I think it's going. Uh, next thing I'll cover the news. Last week I covered on deep scale acquisition. I'll put the link up here. And this week they acquired this company called Haiba. So I'm going to talk a little bit about Haiba. With every stock investment you do, you need to check the numbers. So as usual, I'll update the numbers like the number of cars sold, the amount of superchargers they are building, the carbon impact that they are doing, and of course if if it's a good value proposition. That means to say, if you were to buy a Tesla car from a customer's point of view, is it a good value proposition? Let's go to the charts. Okay, last week uh, when I released my video, the Tesla stock, this is the daily charts over here, and the Tesla stock was around here and it actually get downwards because they released their deliveries. However, it's still within my range over here, but before I dive deep down into this uh, range over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a quick overall view on the Tesla charts. So now this is the long term view of Tesla stock from 2001 all the way up to now. And as usual, I usually will just draw the trend if it's going up or down. Mm, as, you, as you can see over here, the Tesla stock is still on the uptrend and it's still pretty bullish. Now it's probably at a place where I think it's pretty cheap to go in because you know you do not want to buy up, up here, you want to buy down where it's cheaper and you make from the price going up okay so so this is the first thing i'm checking the long term trend as long as the long term trend is an uptrend you know you're good to go so next thing is i'll check the shorter term you get this green line over here same thing there's a lot of resistance and what happens is that the stock has broke this green line broke the resistance moving into a sideway trend so now as you can see the stock is you know, um, they, we call it a uh, price squeezing in. So it's squeezing right into the middle over here. And if you look, uh, last week when I posted this uh, this counter over here, my last week's video, the stock was around here. And the price did drop, but it's still within the range which I drew. So now, as of yesterday, the stock price shot very high up again. Uh, so fundamentally, there's nothing more in the company. It's just, you know, in the stock market, price just goes up and down daily. And we just need to watch the price movement to you know see how it has it broke your investment thesis or not. So so the on the technical charts, what I think is the price is going to squeeze all the way. And if you see the earnings date here, there's an earnings date here. What I predict, okay, this is what uh, analysts predict. They predict they will be losing money at minus one dollar per share. Okay, so probably at this point of time, this is the place where the stock will squeeze. Let me draw over here. The stock will squeeze in until the earnings date and kaboom. So this is the direction which I predict is going to go. It's going to gap up because there's a huge squeeze in between. The price just wants to burst out somewhere and probably it will burst coming up. I just need you guys to know as investors is that your company, they do not miss estimates. Is the analyst, they miss reality. So this is a thought process that you always need to put in your head is that the analyst, they just these numbers here are just plucked out by analysts who are paid by banks to give a certain number, a certain estimate. So usually companies do not miss estimates. It's just the analysts miss reality, that's all. So that's a penny for your thought for all other investment decisions you make. Last week I covered the acquisition on deep scale. Uh, if you missed that video, I'm going to put the link up here. So this week I'm going to cover the news on high bar acquisition. So what does high bar do? Haiba is a battery production expert, means they know how to make batteries, they can produce batteries, okay? So uh, why do Tesla want to acquire a company that knows how to make batteries? It's because Tesla wants to make their own batteries. Currently, the suppliers now for Tesla is Panasonic and LG Chem. Panasonic, they make their factories in Tesla Gigafactory 1. So what happens is that Gigafactory 1 has the factory and it leaves the space to Panasonic to make batteries for them. Uh, LG Chem is providing batteries to Gigafactory 3 in China. So there are two main suppliers for Tesla right now. The thing is with Tesla, despite so many suppliers and making the most batteries in the world by far of any company, they still do not have enough batteries 
to meet the demands of the customer. So now what Tesla want to do is that they are trying to find many ways to acquire all these technologies to make their own batteries in a massive, massive scale. So Haiba is a battery production expert. What they do is, uh, let me give you a actually breakdown on what Haiba does uh, in, like, in very brief details. I'll actually do another video to actually specifically look at Haiba itself, but this is the main gist of Haiba. So what they do is that because they are battery production expert, they are very really good at uh, these few things like auto cell loading into the carrier boats. They do auto transfer to vacuum filled modules. They do verification of electrolytes uh, within the cell to measure if the battery is of good quality or not or else to be rejected. It's all auto. So the next thing they do is auto programmable vacuum filling sequence and also like auto non-conforming cell rejection. So they, they do a lot of these things which you see is all auto and it actually will help a lot in Tesla when they mass produce batteries because when they mass produce batteries every little savings they do will save them billions of dollars in the long run so as of last week they announced 97 deliveries in Q3 the highest delivery ever in Tesla there's a lot of things you cannot measure but the one of the best ways to measure Tesla is if there's a demand for their car simple as that you know uh, so if you realize that you know Tesla had the highest delivery in Q3 ever. And this is the last quarter they will have before Shanghai Giga Tree Factory 3 comes out in like a, one or two weeks and they will start manufacturing cars too. In Q4, they will probably make more than 100,000 cars and as Giga Factory 3 ramps up, this chart will just keep spiking upwards. Okay, next. If you look at this uh, quarterly update, so this is the second quarter of 2019. And this is the third quarter of 2019. You look at this chart, it, it's massively stupid right now. You see Tesla is like taking up the whole entire bar and else every other car below here can't even add up to what Tesla is doing. It's madness. So this is in Q2, this is in Q3. Okay, so the thing is sometimes you may look at this as, hey look, it's a BMW 3 series. How about the 4 series and the 5 series? So I have another chart for you to add everything in together. This is another chart representing Tesla sales. So instead of having like the particular models like in individually, we added everything. Uh, BMW 2 series, 3 series, 4 series, 5 series, and you realize it's just a small portion on Tesla Model 3 sales. Next you have Mercedes, you add all the Mercedes here, the C class, the CLA, the, the cheapest class of the Mercedes, the CLA, then there's the E class. You realize everything add up, they are still losing to Tesla, just that one car, right? So Tesla has a massive lead right now, and you see these manufacturers here, their sales just dropping by double digits. So you might be thinking over here, so that is just their segment that they are doing, the mid-size to luxury cars. So how about comparing to the cheapo cars like the Japanese and the Korean cars? So now, let's go to the next chart here. This is the 10 best-selling cars in USA in quarter 3. So we have number 1, the Honda Civic, selling 81,000 cars. And you look at the entire chart over here, you realize the only car which is electric and is probably double or triple the price of all these cheapo cars is in the top 10. So Tesla is competing against the cheapest car out there and winning them massively. And if you look at the revenue of Model 3 here, because Model 3 is a significantly more expensive car, if you, are, you put this chart in the revenue, right, the revenue will supersede the Honda Civic easily because a Model 3 is more than twice the price of a Honda Civic. Tesla to date, 7 October to date, as of me doing this video, Tesla has removed 3.5 million tons of CO2 from the atmosphere. Freaking amazing. Every single car they put out there is equivalent to 33 barrels of oil not sold a year. So amazing job Tesla is doing. Uh, the world is suffering from global warming and the whole green thing is somehow happening. And it's very amazing to see Tesla at the forefront helping this world. This is the value proposition for Tesla cars for their customers. So it's actually cheaper than a Toyota or a Honda. Actually, I did a video in depth on that. I put the video link up here. Next thing is that it is very environmentally friendly, even if your power source is coal. I actually did another video in depth on that. I put the link up here. It's the fastest four-door saloon period. If you Wikipedia this, I'm just gonna scroll down. Yep, Tesla Model S. 0 to 100 in 2.3 seconds and every other car up here is not a saloon car. 
So that is how fast a Tesla is. Okay, and of course, they are the safest car in the world, crash tested and accident per mile. Of course, I did another video on that. I put the link up here. So upcoming, mostly in 2019, mostly everything is done. The Model 3 is, is in uh, Asia and Europe, uh, now in Australia. Uh, Model Y unveiled. The only thing left not done over here is the pickup truck unveiling. Tesla has no rush for this because they currently cannot make enough batteries for their Model 3 alone. So for them delaying the pickup truck unveiling, I actually don't blame them on that. So that's towards the end of the year. I see this coming up towards I think November or December. Uh, China plant is going to begin production very very soon in a, a week or two. I, I predict 14 October according to inside sources. And yeah, in 2020, the exciting stuff going to come out like the semi production, the roadster and the model Y. The thing is, there's no rush for all this semi and roadster production if they cannot scale their battery production. Please know that they are making the most batteries in the world already and they still cannot meet up demand. So there's no use to rush all this production out when they can't even meet up current demands. It's a good problem. So I'm going to conclude this video. I'm super bullish in the long term. Uh, after the Q3 results release, I think the company is going to get up like the charts I did just now. The market cap at only 40 billion right now is pretty cheap. And I foresee in the long term, like five, six years time, their market cap will be at least 500 billion, which is still a very, very reasonable market cap out there. They are a market leader. There is no car that can beat Tesla right now. Uh, next year, they'll launch a roadster and it's going to be a slap to every other patrol car out there. And of course, last but not least, they are three to four years ahead of competition and they are going to keep the lead for a long, long, long time to come. I hope you find this video useful. Remember, if you like this video, subs if you like it and on that notification bell. Good. Bye.